Have you ever felt like you're going crazy, but you can't quite put your finger on why? Welcome to the world of gaslighting, a form of emotional abuse where reality is manipulated, making you question your own sanity. It's a subtle, insidious tactic with profound impacts on mental health, capable of making you doubt your memories, perceptions, and even your own self-worth. In this video, we will explore 10 examples of what gaslighting sounds like. So sit back, listen closely, and let's unravel this psychological phenomenon together. First up, we have denial and minimization. This is a tactic where the gaslighter outright denies your experiences or downplays them to the point of insignificance. Imagine someone saying, that never happened, you're imagining things. This outright denial of a shared experience can lead you to question your memory and perception. The gaslighter is essentially invalidating your reality. Equally damaging is the minimization tactic. A gaslighter might say something like, it was just a joke, can't you take a joke? Here they're dismissing your feelings as an overreaction to humor or making you feel oversensitive for expressing concern. By trivializing your feelings, the gaslighter shifts the blame onto you, making you feel foolish for reacting the way you did. In essence, denial and minimization are tools that gaslighters use to make you doubt your own memory and perception, undermining your confidence in your own experiences and feelings. Next, we delve into shifting blame and projection. This is where the gaslighter excels at turning the tables. The first example goes, you're the one who's always overreacting. Why are you so dramatic? Here, the gaslighter is deflecting attention from their own harmful behavior by painting you as the one who's always overreacting. They're essentially making you feel like the problem, not them. The second example is a classic case of projection. You're the one being abusive. Look at how upset you're getting. This is a confusing narrative where the gaslighter projects their own abusive behavior onto you. Suddenly you find yourself in a twisted reality where the victim is painted as the aggressor. This is a muddled, perplexing situation that's designed to keep you off balance. These tactics are used by gaslighters to shift the blame onto you, making you feel like the problem. Moving on, we tackle confusion and ambiguity. Now this is where the gaslighter really starts to distort your reality. Let's start with the first example. I never said that. You must have misunderstood. With this, the gaslighter denies their own words, leaving you questioning your own comprehension of the situation. You start to wonder, did I hear them right, or am I misremembering? Then comes the second method, a rather sinister one. Maybe you should see a therapist. You seem a bit paranoid lately. Here, the gaslighter invalidates your concerns by suggesting mental health issues. This plants seeds of doubt in your mind, further destabilizing your confidence in your own memory and perception. It's as if you're walking through a fog, unsure of what's true and what's not. Gaslighters use these tactics to make you question your own understanding and sanity. Now, let's talk about isolation and control. Two powerful tools in a gaslighter's arsenal are isolation and control. Picture this, you're told, you can't tell anyone about this. They won't believe you. This is a clear attempt to isolate you from your support system, which can be friends, family, or even professional help. It forces you to rely solely on the gaslighter, and it makes it incredibly difficult to seek assistance or validation. Now imagine hearing, you're too sensitive to handle the truth. I can't be honest with you anymore. This is a method of control, limiting your access to information. It's a manipulative way to make you feel that you can't trust anyone else's perspective. It's a way to control your perception of reality, making you more dependent on the gaslighter's version of the truth. These tactics are used by gaslighters to isolate and control you, making it harder for you to seek help. Lastly, we have emotional manipulation. This is a cunningly crafty way gaslighters manipulate your emotions, playing with your feelings like they're marionettes in a puppet show. Let's look at the first example. If you really loved me, you wouldn't get so upset. Here, the gaslighter uses guilt and obligation to manipulate your emotions. They twist your natural emotional reaction to their behavior into a supposed lack of love or care for them. Suddenly, your valid feelings of hurt or frustration are not about their actions, but about your supposed lack of affection. Then there's this. I'm sorry, but I just can't help it if you get so easily offended. In this instance, the gaslighter minimizes their responsibility while making you feel responsible for their behavior. They insinuate that it's your sensitivity causing the issue, not their actions or words. Gaslighters often use these tactics to manipulate your emotions and silence your reactions. To recap, we've looked at 10 examples of what gaslighting sounds like. We started with denial and minimization, where the gaslighter denies your experiences or trivializes your feelings, making you doubt your own perceptions. We moved on to shifting blame and projection, where the gaslighter deflects attention from their own hurtful behavior, 
by making you feel like the problem or projects their own behavior onto you, creating a confusing narrative. Next, we discuss confusion and ambiguity, where the gaslighter denies their own words or suggests you have mental health issues, leaving you questioning your own understanding of the situation. We then explored isolation and control, where the gaslighter isolates you from your support systems or controls your access to information, increasing your dependence on them and making it harder for you to seek help. Finally, we examined emotional manipulation, where the gaslighter uses guilt and obligation to manipulate your emotions or minimizes their responsibility while making you feel responsible for their behavior, further eroding your self-esteem. Gaslighting is a form of emotional abuse that can be subtle and insidious, with the language used varying depending on the individual and situation. Recognizing it can be difficult, but it's important to trust your gut feeling if you suspect you're being gaslighted. Remember, if you suspect you're being gaslighted, trust your gut feeling and seek support. You deserve to be in a healthy relationship where your feelings and perceptions are respected.